In class, we conducted simulations to see if populations were evolving over time. But in reality, it's a lot harder for scientists to know if a population, such as this group of blue-footed boobies, are actually evolving. In this video, we're going to learn about an equation, the Hardy-Weinberg equation, that can help us tell if populations are evolving or not. Let's start by looking at the opposite of evolution. The opposite of evolution is equilibrium, specifically Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. If a population is in equilibrium, it is not evolving, and thus its allele frequencies are constant from one generation to the next. And in order for a population to remain in equilibrium, it has to satisfy several conditions. Let's take a look at those conditions. The first one is no selection. No mutation is the second. An isolated population to prevent gene flow, an infinitely large population to prevent genetic drift, and finally, random mating. These conditions may look familiar to you because they're basically the opposite of the five forces of evolution. An important thing to note is that any violation of these conditions will disrupt equilibrium. And thus, because it's very hard to meet all of these conditions, most populations are actually evolving, at least a little bit. So now let's take a look at the equation that can help us figure out if populations are in equilibrium or evolving. To start, we're going to identify the symbols in the equation. And we're going to use this population of blue-footed boobies to help us. So in the booby population, no webbing on the feet is dominant. Webbing is recessive. And let's say that we know the genotypes of these boobies. Well, the frequency of the dominant allele is symbolized by P. And in this case, it would be 0.3. The frequency of the recessive allele is symbolized by Q. In this case, it's 0.7. And as we've seen in class, P and Q add up to 1 because there's only a dominant and a recessive allele for this trait. Now, we can also infer something else. Here's our population of boobies. We could also infer that the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype, this one, plus the frequency of the heterozygous dominant genotype, this one, plus the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype, this one, this one, and this one, also are going to add up to 1, because those are the only three possible genotypes. And in fact, if we did the calculations for this population, we see that that holds true. So we can make one more inference here. And this is important because in reality, in a population, individuals don't waddle around with their genotypes stamped to their chest. But we do know that in this population, the frequency of the dominant phenotype and the frequency of the recessive phenotype, these three, are going to have to add up to one, because those are the only two phenotypes, dominant and recessive. And in case we would, if we calculated this, we would see that it is true. So this put together helps us derive the Hardy-Weinberg equation. Here it is. P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals one. And this actually makes quite a bit of sense. P squared is really the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotypes. If P is the frequency of the dominant allele, the frequency of getting both dominant alleles is P times P, or P squared. 2PQ is the frequency of the heterozygous dominant genotype, because if you have the heterozygous genotype, you could get the dominant allele from your mom, recessive allele from your dad, or vice versa. So it's 2 times P times Q. Q squared is our homozygous recessive genotype, because to get two recessive alleles, it would be Q times Q. Also note that these two terms put together, together excuse me, give us the dominant phenotype. So what good is this equation? Well, first of all, it's important to note that for a population in equilibrium, both the Hardy-Weinberg equation and the simpler equation, P plus Q equals one, are both true. So if we have a population in equilibrium, we can use these two equations to determine allele frequencies. However, if we find that these two equations don't hold true, we can then conclude that a population is evolving. Let's take a look at a quick example. We've got 500 boobies. 
and we can see that 20 of them are recessive, 20 of them are webbed. How can we determine the frequency of the dominant and recessive alleles? Well, we know a few things here. We know that 20 of the boobies look like this, which means that 480 of the boobies have the dominant trait. And we also keep in mind our Hardy-Weinberg equation, as well as the p plus q equals 1. Now, since we know that 20 have the recessive phenotype, we actually know q squared. So we could say that q squared is equal to 20 boobies out of the total population of 500, which is 0 0.04. Once we know q squared, we can find q. We just take the square root. So now we know the frequency of the recessive allele. Now that we know q, we can find p. p is going to be 1 minus q because p plus q always add up to 1. And in class, we'll practice applying this equation to several different case studies.